major uh, I love architecture platform called for ideas and the project at the Bay of the Movies. Um, so we are actually a collaborative of three uh, young architects and urbanists from Greece who are currently living in London. And it's Dimitris, FA and me, myself. Um, Dimitris is also editor of chief of architecture um, studies, uh, art studies. And um, he um, and, and has been exploring urban decay for more than three years. Effie's research is also very much
In, in his essay, Zillow described architecture as the only art in which the great struggle between the will of spirits and the necessity of nature issues into real balance. Uh, so moving on, on the 21st century, and alongside the rapid urban transformations, the established concept changed radically and created new terminologies and advanced the existing architectural debate. So, um, so what do we mean about? Yeah. So what do we mean? Uh, we try to understand and um, modern ruins and determine the, the, the disuse. Uh, yeah, in this context of. Um, Sites, sites is industrial sites, which is a huge percentage. Okay. 
particular scale. Last but not least, these sites could benefit significantly the environment in territorial or even regional scale throughout sustainable redesign proposals. As climate change is one of the major factors to affect the future of our cities, authorities and designers are looking forward to green infrastructure as a means to deal with stormwater, mitigating flooding, increasing biodiversity and other solutions. Um, so with this in mind, um, in the Max Making Conference of Ljubljana, we presented our process, which is like a five-step guide on how we could reactivate these spaces, uh, which is our project that was developed. Um, so basically it's five steps, explore, save, crowdsource, render and debate the room. And the objective was to challenge the established presumptions of the modern ruins and urban decay and suggest that any activation of these unused spaces can happen through social practices that involve all stakeholders. So the first step it was the explore the ruin and it must include this space as a, an open call for evidence. So uh, an invitation to urban explorers or researchers in various European cities to um, document and submit material in the form of short text or um, a, a photographs or even collected objects from these abandoned places, plans, visuals, and scans, and so on. And the aim is to map the several known and unknown cases and um, understand their material and immaterial conditions and also communicate these findings online. Which leads us to the second step, which is like the, what we call save the ruin. And this is basically a setup of a digital archive of the collected material. And this platform will disclose all information from the open call and make all the documents publicly available. And this way we promote open access of information and at the same time we attempt to raise awareness regarding the open urban phenomenon of declining built environments. Um, so the third step seeks to engage individuals, uh, local communities, experts and non-experts with the process. So that's, there, that's, for, there, that's why we crowdsource the win. And we, uh, basically we seek to digitally expose the archived case studies and invite people to contribute with ideas and possible future scenarios. Crowdsourcing is a very standard um, sourcing model uh, which organizations use to um, use contributions from the internet basically and um, to obtain needed services and in our idea that would be the ideas. Um, and we propose the use of social media basically which reach out to younger generations or other digital media that could also be possible that provide agency to a wider um, variety of existing bodies and social practices. In this way, the crowdsourcing becomes, becomes the negotiation tool um, in a participatory planning model that can involve various actors from the government, the municipalities, local authorities, and the community, the local community or potential investors. Now the fourth step addresses the professionals from various disciplines to render the way with the, and this takes the form of very targeted calls or competitions or workshops uh, that professionals are able to develop concrete proposals that respond to specific sites and also to the ideas collected from the crowdsourcing step. So they won't, though we don't necessarily say that we take the ideas and we just do all of them or see how they are materialized, but also they can reflect on them, see how they can actually work on the ground, uh, adding their own layer of expertise or even reject it. Uh, the purpose is to ask architects or other professionals to work with what the community or other stakeholders want and need and how they can accommodate the, these needs or these visions into ex uh, existing build forms and new build forms. So, by this time we hope we will have enough material to be able to start a conversation and basically debate the way. And this is our final step in the series of process where we propose that uh, the organization of exhibitions or other events um, uh, where part of this material that has been collected can be presented um, to get the crowdsource ideas as well as the renderings and, we, and uh, we can also even think of think tanks across Europe where they organize regular conferences
conferences on modern ruins and thus offer the opportunity to juxtapose and openly discuss the future of ruins and also like the architecture and culture and heritage that comes with them. So after the Ljubljana, we have yeah. the Belgrade. Yeah, so the first test, let's say, of the idea was Belgrade, where we've been invited, as we were told, to the Belgrade Outskirts and Vision Future Conference, uh, organized as part of the Belgrade International Architecture Week. Uh, so for this we tried out to explore, understand and analyze briefly the history and the factors that form and continue to shape the city of Belgrade and its periphery. Interesting, interestingly, inter interestingly enough, sorry, uh, we discovered that um, there has been already an online platform of urban explorers, um, one that you can see in the access if you want. Um, so we had already uploaded material for a wide number of spaces and cases across the country. So instead of reinventing the wheel, uh, this, we tried to approach this platform and get material from uh, urban explorers. Um, so after that we came with a few strategies regarding the different uh, types and typologies of ruins uh, and tried to narrow down the categories in these three which are the deserted mining sites, the abandoned industrial uh, buildings, and the derelict settlements. Considering the city's social, economic, and cultural condition, we focused on two municipalities, Obrenovac and Lazarevac. The debates we brought to the fore with our presentation was clearly um, stating that the top-down official policy as expressed by the Belgrade team development strategy. The document proposes either the restoration and cultivation of land degraded due to the industrial mining and energy activities, or activating tourist and economic potentials with recultivation of the deserted mining sites. Uh, however, what we wanted to uh, initiate this discussion between the states and other private stakeholders, uh, so we went on suggesting the creation of a digital interface, the one, like the one that you can see. Um, <coughs> so, uh, this interface could allow uh, official propositions to be debated openly by the community, potential, potential investors and local organizations that could access the uh, platform. And next step was here, where many where we were invited by the Connections School for Architecture to participate in the festival and that means uh, we were invited to run a six days um, uh, quite interdisciplinary workshop on special developments of uh, scenarios on, of uh, the museum complex Mistetsky Arsenal and the arsenal was originally built around the, 19, the, the end of the 19th century as the factory repair and storage of weapons and during the independence of Ukraine after 2005 Arsenal suddenly was uh, trying to repurpose itself as a cultural and artistic institution um, with a huge area of 9 hectares but despite its importance at the national but also international level one could say only 21% of the big uh, the building is actually being used so the rest of 80% is kind of abandoned. And here the exploration and documentation of the site had already taken place, so we didn't have to do it. And also the idea was already there, so we were crowdsourcing the idea. But our role was to work with participants, um, the 20 number, uh, and these were like researchers and artists and, and architects, planners, journalists, um, sociologists and basically to render, what we call render, the, the idea that was already there from the institution uh, as well as the, the people, the community, which was an open place for art. And in this case, it became obvious how, for example, each group of the participants came up with a different uh, uh, translation of the same idea. And they came up with completely different strategies and how negotiations between the stakeholders uh, like um, that we have, for example, we're working with the institutional management, but also the state has a very much uh, influence on, on the organization of the, of the institution. Also, there was Connection School, and then it was us, um, 
then, then we have to negotiate and debate the, what can actually happen in order to you know, search for the optimal direction. And the debate was a very integral part of the workshop. So, first of all, we, the workshop was happening inside the building. And we had daily interaction with the people from the management. And then also connection schools were coming to give feedback, um, at least twice I remember. And the results were presented during the festival um, that a lot of people attended because there were also other actions and other activities. And um, uh, we had a poster, that we had exhibition, that we had uh, presentations, of, uh, excuse me, and uh, booklets that people could look at. Uh, and also this activity even extended beyond the end of the workshop because we actually managed to um, have a press conference where the results were being uh, exposed and communicated with the larger public and audience. And also there was um, a very much, let's say, the, the interest from the management to continue the conversation even after the workshop to implement some of the renderings in a, in a short or a long term. And the last text takes place basically here at Pristina, where we decided to focus on more on our means, or the so-called Palace of Youth and Sports. Um, it was built in 1977 by, um, by the architects of Royal Zernkovitz uh, as a symbol of brotherhood and unity between the Serbs and the Albanians, who constituted at that point the majority of the population in Kosovo. And uh, there are, um, and what happened basically is that in 2000, there was a head, the building was heavily damaged by fire. And since then, there has been some kind of renovation, but only a small part of the building is actually being used, mainly for sports events, while, let's say, the big arena or the big conference hall are left, are, have been abandoned. And um, uh, so, what is the potential? So what we can do, and here in this case, we thought we should uh, work with the crowdsourcing staff. So more than one month ago, I believe, uh, we launched a Facebook page uh, to crowdsource ideas about this building, what can happen in the future with that, um, and kind of like feed our workshop with ideas. And we invited people to engage uh, with, with the page, like. Uh, submit their ideas, vote for submitted ideas, and interestingly, 348 people um, already showed interest, either uh, interest or, or even attending. 110 people participated in the poll. In the poll, there were nine submitted ideas, and the most popular being uh, botanical garden space for urban agriculture. Uh, 23 people preferred <coughs> also the building to become a laboratory of uh, collective intelligence, and also 10 people supported the creation of a small startup business innovation center and conference hall. Now, while these ide other ideas were also included, I mean, you can see the tech pack, sports hall, flea market, urban health community center, museum of memory and social inclusivity, or digital gallery, there were many of those. So the workshop that we actually started today, uh, the participants were divided in group, and then each group, group had to work with one of those ideas, and they had to come up. They are, they should be by the end of the workshop, come up with a refined, let's say, design proposal that is either following this submitted idea or challenging it in some kind. And um, of course, uh, most of the participants have a deep knowledge of the local context and history, so uh, that is much helpful on how to take this submitted idea out of context and actually make it work within the specific <coughs> context and better accommodate somehow, somehow the societal needs and aspirations. So, um, this is it. Thank you. We are hoping to explore this idea further in the future, and we're looking forward to having your Thank you. Do you have any questions? Yes, please. Is there a next step for the youth center building? Now you crowdsource the ideas. Yes. Is there a next step planned, or does it stop here? 
Well, that really depends on, on the organization, I guess. That's a question towards that direction. Uh, but we hope that, um, so the, it's, it's quite a short workshop, so it's only two days. It meant to be intensive though. Um, and by the end, it's like, what we would aim for is to come up with some, you know, sectional design proposals. So that it works, you know, like um, either together or not, and you can combine. This will be expressed in the model. Also, tries to, to open the discussion actually for the future of the building. And I think this was the purpose. And also, we have been somehow invited, let's say, that there was an abandoned building uh, or partly abandoned building. So, our proposal was looking towards activating spaces in Europe in general. So, uh, I want to thank once again uh, uh, for having us here. Uh, and I guess through this event is where one can actually put pressure on the higher level of yeah. decision making to push or show that there is a need to take yeah. some kind of action. So hopefully there will be enough communication and put enough pressure. Yes? Is there anything in your process to engage those decision makers? Because Maybe they already have another idea. Yeah, that's true. I mean, is there a way you can grab them into your crowdsourcing or um, pull them in into the process, your process? Yeah, I think this could become a bit more technical. I mean, obviously there are several ways to set up a crowdsource platform. So the, what we decided was to came up with the Facebook page. Yeah. Which was a more, but the decision maker is not going to no, 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 of course. But so I guess if something could happen in the future, maybe this small I don't know, pilot project would work to maybe inspire uh, a proper or more official platform, crowdsourced platform, to so some degree. It's kind of passive, crowdsourcing is kind of passive. No, 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 you, maybe for something so important, you need to active. You need to go grab them and pull them into your process. But what's happening so I think far it's, is... it's always is related to the scale. I mean, there are, there are few examples and projects that were related and built from crowdsourced platforms. So if you manage to grab one million people, so you get attention in a way that... So it's a matter of, of obviously, how Facebook page didn't reach that level. Yeah. But it's always a, a matter of approach. So promotion or how many people are involved from which field, obviously, we both as architects try, try to grab as much attention as we could from the architectural field, but I guess if more people from the local community or different institutions were involved, other people could participate or heard about it and that way you get more audience and more audience with more power and numbers. But I guess this kind of process is not meant to be instigated by us as individuals and foreigners to this kind of context, but someone that I mean, ideally, it would be a medium level of decision maker that can actually touch upon both sides, let's say. And if you run this in your website or in your public events, and you can actually have them hearing what you're doing and have those uh, engaging, then you can, I guess, reach the two ends or the two sides. Um, but that's. But, I mean, in any way, if they have an idea, they do have it. But what about the rest? So, maybe the crowdsourcing is to give voice to the rest, and then you just need this one organization that can actually make the communication possible. Yeah, as an organizer, I think just to add on what you have said, uh, I think that uh, the purpose was to initiate the discussion, because until now, there was no discussion at all. And we as a citizen, Especially uh, uh, the, let's say, creative community of Pristina, they lack spaces. Uh, and uh, so, in this case, with this proposal, we want to attack a major building that is left, that is in ruin, and nobody uses it in order to activate this process and to, uh, and in a way, to think also of the other spaces in the city. That uh, it just seems like a similar state process. process. Maybe, I, yeah, I don't know, if it were me in your process, I would be setting up meetings with the 
decision makers to say to them, look, this is the result we have, you know, and try to bring them into it. Yeah, um, this is probably after the, probably after the maybe in your rendering phase. Yeah, you know, some maybe that's the, the sixth step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are talking about the initial steps. Yeah, the baby steps. Can you just clarify a little bit about ownership of the there is a fight between the municipality and the prioritization agency because the uh, administration of the one is under the prioritization agency. On the other side, the municipality pretends, and I think it would be finally decided there, to get back the, the building because this building has been built through the, uh, say, citizens' contribution. For several years, all who has been working in Pristina municipality has been given a kind of uh, institution to build this asset center. I think this, particularly this, this uh, abundant space is due to undefined uh, ownership. If municipality would own the place, they would probably so uh, the, the issue of uh, using this big wall. Because what is missing there is the slab, which was installed by the fire, install the yeah. services which were uh, uh, at the time like uh, eating, uh, lighting, pumping, there's also a uh, arena.